Well, hello everyone. Yay. Welcome, welcome, welcome. Hello to my birthday party. Woohoo. Woo. My birthday today. And I am so happy you are here to celebrate with me. Yes, yes. Come on in, everyone. Say hello. Where are you? Yes. Tell us where you're from. Wow. Yay. <laughs> Well, I'm super excited to be celebrating another birthday. Yes, Malia, thank you. That's great. <laughs> yes, yes, yes. Welcome, everyone. Thank you for being here today. So I am very excited to be sharing this special day with you. Uh, as I said, and today I wanted to celebrate with you and really speak about something that is near and dear to my heart. But first, where is my team? <laughs> Hold on. <laughs> there they are. <laughs> Dance along with us if it's your, in, wherever you are. Of course, unless you're at the office, but that's okay. <laughs> It's my birthday. It's my birthday. It's my birthday. You're welcome to my party. They, thank you, T. Oh, uh, all right. Now I guess we'll get down to business, but not business actually. We want to make this fun. Um, that's the idea of, of this webinar today is really to have a celebration of life and celebrate us all being here and and so forth and so i chose to really touch on something today that is really near and dear to my heart and that's big life uh, i don't know how many of you are familiar with my big life trainings or concepts or were you ever a part of our mastermind class if you were let me know so anyway, this is near and dear to my heart, like I said. So I'm going to tell you how Big Life came about, tell you about the book, and then really focus on the key principles as to how do you live your big life and what does big life mean? You know, that's the other piece of that. So we'll start there and we'll get into the principles. Also today, I'm excited because I love to give people gifts on my birthday. So we have some great big life gifts for you. And then at the end, I have one master gift. So if you can stay on to the end, that would be awesome. And we also have some special announcements today. And the other gift we want to give you is a discount on the Live a Big Life book, um, which by the way, we have limited number of the books. So and something else special that I want to do that ties in to what I'm going to talk about today is that whatever funds uh, that come in for this book, Office Dynamics is going to match that and donate to the Pancreatic Cancer Network, the association. So because this is really how a lot of it started was when my husband was, our journey started when my husband was diagnosed with pancreatic cancer. So on that note, it's been 16 years, wow, since we first heard the devastating news that my husband had pancreatic cancer. And so for three years, I was um, by his side during that entire battle. And so I learned a lot of deep, principles about living a big life that I hadn't learned earlier in my life. And that's not to say we didn't have struggles, you know, other times, but this was the biggest and the hardest thing that he and I ever had to do. And from two sides, he was the patient, he was the one with the disease. I was a caregiver. And that was very hard because I had a business to run and family and a house to take care of and so forth. And so for three years, we fought that battle. And um, sadly, Dave lost the battle at, at 60 years old. So it was the year after he passed away that I decided to write 
live a big life. Give yourself permission to live a big life. That's important. You've got to give yourself permission to do it. And so the book is a memoir book, you know, telling my story, going back to really when I was born, which I wasn't even supposed to live through the birth. So the fact that I'm here today, I'm very happy about that. But anyway, so it's a memoir type book. There are my stories, you know, throughout my life and some of the things that I learned or that I had faced. But there are lessons in the book. And so the book is really about courage, faith, risk taking, overcoming obstacles, um, focusing, being all that you're meant to be in your life. So there are a lot of principles in the book. And that's what I want to share with you today. I want to share what some of those key principles are so that you can start living your big life. But, you know, what do I mean by big life? It's about the breadth and the depth of your life. When I say big life, it's not about how many things you have. It's not about accumulating a lot of things. It doesn't mean you won't accumulate some nice things as you live your big life or have those nice vacations, but that isn't what I'm, I'm trying to say. Big life is more about the depth of our lives, the quality of our lives. You don't know how long you are going to live. You know, I saw that with my husband at 57, he got very sick and he passed at 60. So you can't wait to live your big life. You have to start living it now. And so no matter how many years you have, it's what what's the breadth of that? What's the depth of that life? And so it's about the quality of your life. And we could go into an entirely different conversation, you know, when we talk about the quality of life. But you will see as I talk about how that comes out. So the first, so number one, that's the first principle. Big life is about the breath you know are you are you living wide deep and big or are you still huddled up in your home because you still haven't really come out of those bad habits from the pandemic that's a big deal i mean now i've been out more i've been with people more and of course through all our trainings i was just finally in person last week around individuals and their training rooms and such and I'm seeing that there are people who are still, they're very siloed still. They got into this habit after so many years and they don't want to interact with others and they don't want to be bothered. Well, that's not living your big life. So if that's you, you need to get out there and start living life again. Uh, the next principle, a big life is supported by five pillars. So those of you who have read my book, uh, we also talk about big life and the five pillars in our star achievement series course, which actually I'm teaching right now virtually. So the five pillars are career, family, financial, spiritual, and wellness. Um, so if you want to mark those down. Okay, so here are four points about your pillars. And I wish I could pull up the visual, but it seems when I sometimes pull up visuals, then I might lose you and I don't want to risk that. So and when you think about the five pillars, it is one about leading yourself in each pillar. You can't wait for others to lead you in your career. You can't wait on family members to help, you know, create and, and um, host a family reunion. You know, if there's something you want to do in your family, don't wait for others to do it. You do it. You create it. If you think about your financial, you have to participate. You need to lead into that. And if you live with someone else, if you have partners or whatever, you know, just don't put it all on them. You need to participate in that. You know, and what's interesting in my marriage, we were married 34 years and Dave was the numbers guy, but he was he was so fun and creative and excellent in so many ways. But I was running my business. Right. 
And so I'm out there doing the creating and focusing on my work. And our it was kind of, you know, Dave was the numbers guy who handled things that, in the household. And I knew what was going on. It isn't that I didn't know what was going on. Um, I just like spending the money, actually. I let him worry about making sure it was in the bank accounts. <laughs> But I did contribute, you know, I worked my entire uh, life out of high school. And so, but when he got very sick, I realized what I didn't know. And that was very stressful and very painful. So you need to be very involved and understand, you know, what is going on from a financial perspective. Your spiritual pillar, lead yourself in your spiritual spirituality. So when I talk about the spiritual pillar, that could be, I'm not talking about religion, okay? There are a lot of different religions out there. That's not what I'm talking about. It's your spirit is what feeds your soul. And yes, it is your connection to that greater being, whether that is God or what, whomever you believe in or reach out to. But again, we have to lead ourselves in that journey. And then wellness is for sure. You've got to, to lead in that pillar. Again, if, if you think about, so here's another great example. And I'm an open book, okay? Many of you know that. Um, I like to work out, you know, and, and, um, but then when we had kids, it was hard to do that. And I was working full time. And then later on, I, I wanted to do that and go to the gym and want to join the gym, you know, which we did out here. And my husband would always make me laugh because I would be like, let's go to the gym together. And he would go buy all these, you know, gym outfits and his weights or, you know, to do at home, but really going to the gym. And then I'd say, well, let's go. And then he didn't want to go. He'd say, well, I have to get fit before I go to the gym. And I'm like, wait a minute. That's the purpose of the gym. So. I could have sat there and say, I'm not going to the gym because Dave doesn't want to go to the gym, but I didn't. So it's up to us to lead. You have to lead yourself in each pillar. You don't wait for other people to give you permission or to lead or create the path for you. It's your life. And you're also going to need to be accountable in every area of your life. If you mess up, then own it. You messed up. It's okay. But don't blame others. You know, it's great that everybody will say, well, it, it's their fault or my sister did this or it's because of my, my mom was this way. My mother was severely uh, sick with manic depression. I didn't sit there and blame, you know, well, my life's like this because of my mother was sick. No, look at what I've done with my life. So you have to own your life um, with your pillars. We're still with the pillars. They're interwoven. And this is where I wish I had the visual to show you. But our pillars, if you think about um, how they're connected. So if things are going good at work, then that's going to carry over to your family you know, life. And family includes friends, pets, you know, so forth. Your neighbors are part of your family. If we are, you know, if you're stressed about finances, then it's going to be hard to focus on work, right? Uh, or maybe if you're struggling and stressed about finances, you're going to be short tempered at home. You're not going to be patient with your family. So that's what I mean, that they are interwoven. So you, as individuals who are in the workplace, you have to look at your life holistically if you're going to be a stellar assistant. You just can't look at this as the career pillar. You have to realize that all these other pillars impact you for the good or the bad. And so if things are going really well outside of work, you're probably going to be even more excited and more driven and more motivated at work than when you're struggling. So that's the other piece to remember is the connection. Uh, the third point is to give equal attention to each pillar over time. There is no such thing as 
balance, please. For years and years, that's all we hear is life balance, life work balance. There is no such thing. That's a perfect world. There is. I'm 72 years old and my pillars have never been in balance except maybe for one weekend where I gave attention to my work, my family. I looked at my finances. I went to church that Sunday and I worked out. It is not sustainable or realistic. Don't put that pressure on yourself to balance your life. That is not how it works. There are times when your career is going to need a lot of attention. Your work, your job, you're going to need to be focused on it. Or maybe you're you're trying to bring in more money, you know, that you're you're struggling. Okay. There's other times when your family is going to need your attention and they should be in the forefront. There's times your financial pillar needs to be in the forefront. There's times your wellness pillar needs a lot of attention. So focus on it. Don't try to balance it with everything else that is not sustainable. And that is something we teach in our Star Achievement Series, but it's also something I've researched. And I know personally from everything I've had to do. So please do yourself a favor. Get that word balance, work-life balance. There is no such thing. Instead, what you want to look at over a year's time, are you giving equal attention to those pillars over a year's time? So if you've been so focused on your, let's say your work life and other things and being busy, are your kids missing out? And you better plan some time with them, you know, take that family vacation. So I hope that makes sense. And then the fourth point under the big life, the five pillars, your goal is to strengthen each pillar. So again, you give the individual attention and how do you strengthen that and get even better at that? And then you understand that there's times they're going to move. Maybe two are going to take a precedence and the others are going to be back. And then, so you're shifting them and you're adapting and you're going to be a lot less stressed because you're not forcing it. You're saying, I choose to do this. All right, the next one, and then we're going to give a prize away. So um, we first had the breath, depth, and quality is the first principle. Second principle is the five pillars and everything I listed under that. The next is gratitude. This is paramount to living a big life and so i started i learned about writing in uh, gratitude journals soon after my husband was diagnosed with pancreatic cancer and we would go to california we'd have to go there for his treatments and he, we'd stay there in a hotel and every other week and so my sister gave me a gratitude journal and she would come from um, she was in the area and so she would stay with us all the time and when she first gave it to me i thought what do i have to be grateful about you know my husband's not going to live and this is horrible and then but what i did is while he was in the hospital and i was in my hotel room i pulled out that journal and i i did write every night when i was there what I was grateful for. I was grateful I had health insurance. I was grateful that I could stay in a nice hotel, a decent hotel. I was grateful that I could have a di good dinner. And I, that was because I had a good job, right? So I have been writing all these years. I have 16 journals and they're this big. And so, um, and I, I will moan in those journals as well. I will write what I struggle with in those journals as, as well. But I always end with what I'm grateful for at the end of the day. And it can be very simple. I'm grateful I have teeth to chew my food. I'm grateful that I have my limbs to walk and move. You know, those types of things. I'm grateful for my home that I have this. I'm not out on the streets. So you've got to practice gratitude. 
and, and be sure that you express your gratitude to the people who support you. Because you can't live your big life without others. I could not do what I do without the people I have in my personal life and in my professional life. The people in my neighborhood, my big family, all of you, all of you wonderful assistants, you know, who are there. And we're, we're doing life together, right? So gratitude is very, very important. Speaking of that, Malia, let's do a, a gift. What I'd like to do is um, for this one, I'm going to, we have my, it's our big girl diary. <laughs> With the pen, live a big life. So this is one of my favorites. Remember when we were young, a lot of us kept a diary. So who's our winner, Maria? The winner for that is going to be Betsy Beck. Betsy Beck. All Yay. right. Woohoo. <laughs> Yay. Yay. All right. Uh, so next, the next principle is red lipstick on. So you all know I wear red lipstick, right? And um, anyway, how that came about. That became my mantra in the beginning when Dave was diagnosed with the pancreatic cancer. And I'll, I'll never forget how it came about. Um, I had been feeling very overwhelmed, you know, with this new world and worrying about my husband. And but how did I how could I manage everything? Because there was so much to manage. And so there's a a woman I had known, and we still know her to this day. In fact, she is gets very involved with us here at Office Dynamics. Her name is Nancy Fraze. And so I remember one night, I was in my bedroom, and I was going out the door. I think I was going into the kitchen to get something, and it was late at night. And I was standing at that door, and here again, I was trying to do everything, right? And I was exhausted, but I had to do it. And so I was standing at that door feeling really just devastated and i went out into the living room and i sat on the couch and i was just crying and crying and crying and i either i think i called nancy maybe even though it was later at night or wrote her something and she wrote me back and in big letters she said red lipstick on and i'll never ever ever forget that because it just then it became my mantra like okay yes cry let it out it is a struggle but put on your red lipstick and get to work and just do it and so for me red lipstick it's the red it's more than it's more than the lipstick itself and i want to share this with you what does it represent what does it mean because in today's world you've got to put on your red lipstick okay so what do I mean by that? Um, red represents uh, strength and um, energy. It represents power. So people, women who wear red lipstick appear to be more powerful than women who don't. Um, red is a strong color. It's a color that communicates confidence, that you must be a confident individual. I know when I do put on my red lipstick, that's how I feel, you know, and I especially put it on when I maybe don't feel good. In fact, I don't know if many of you know, but I'm working on a book too, actually, and the story will come out in my book too, A Big Life. But anyway, when I was diagnosed with brain cancer in 2014, and I was very, very sick, and um, my son and my sister you know, they took me to the hospital in Santa Monica, California. We were all petrified, didn't know what was going on. I could hardly get up. And anyways, my sister, who is my advocate and, and very good friend, and I adore her, she actually put on my, she had me put on my white t-shirt that said red lipstick on and my red lipstick. So as they wheeled me into the hospital and I could hardly hold my head up, I had on my red lipstick. And it was just that little bit that helped me feel like 
as sick as I am, I can do this, you know? So for women, what does it mean? And I know we may have men on here as well, but more think about what it means, okay? So a couple things. As women in the workplace, we often have to put on our red lipstick. We need to be confident. And in fact, we just talked about this uh, with the group that I was with earlier this week and had executive assistants in a full day session with me. And we talked about having influence, we talked a lot about being confident. And, and that's a hard skill for maybe a lot of females. So meaning when you put on your red lipstick, like I said, not that you have to wear it, but there's times you've got to have that confidence and that comes through and how you talk and how you walk and how you respond to people and don't act timid, but you're not a bully either. It also means to me that you've, you've got to command respect in the workplace. And that's one thing about the administrative role and something that I worked on 54 years ago when I first went into being a secretary. How do I command being taken seriously? Because there always was this, this brit or gap of management's up here and admin staff is here. They're the superiors and we're the workers. And actually my mission with Office Dynamics was to bridge that gap and have you be seen as partners, right? But we have to, um, like I said, it, whether it's getting that respect from the leader you support, maybe you need to gain respect from a coworker who's not you know, treating you with respect. Maybe there are individuals in your workplace who are crossing boundaries, you know? So that's important. It's having the attitude of you deserve to be respected and you are business partners but you have to act like it as well also with the red it's standing up for what we believe in we live in a world of followers followers and most people are working on autopilot well everybody else does this so i guess i need to be doing that no you don't a lot of times other people are not going down the right path. So you have to stand up for what you believe in is right and authentic. And in the workplace, the last, the pandemic did us no good. And I'm not talking just from the, the fear side and the illness, of course, obviously, but it messed people up because now that they've come back, supposedly come back into the workplace or back into the world, they're all messed up. They've like forgotten how to behave, how to act. There's a lot of incivility in the workplace. There's a whole movement now being started on that. People not being respectful of each other, people being super sensitive about every little thing. So as an individual, you need to put on that red lipstick and raise your standards, raise the bar. I've done that my entire life. So, and, and speak out, like I said, but you speak out in a good way. You speak out with passion and persuasion. And again, being influential, influential. That's our theme this year of our conference is the influential assistant using influence in a positive way to shape a better world. And not just in our workplaces, we need it everywhere, everywhere. And then the other piece with the red lipstick is when you're struggling with numerous projects, when you feel overwhelmed because there's so much to do, right? You don't even know the priorities. Tell yourself red lipstick on. Like I said, it's a mantra. And what that means is, yes, I have all this stuff I've got to do right now. My office, 
the last few months and moving forward, we have so many complex projects and moving parts. We have our trainings. We have a huge conference coming up with 500 people in less than eight weeks. We're already brainstorming for our 35th year anniversary next year and everything we're going to do when we're launching our classes and all of this. So that can be overwhelming, just like you might feel in your workplace. I know there are many times you feel overwhelmed. So what we have to do is kind of, well, first pause, take a break. I know I have to do that. And then look at it like, okay, I'm, I'm gonna tackle this, but be smart about it. Focus on your A priorities. That's another chapter in my book, it's called Focus. Don't get pulled in a hundred directions, which actually is gonna lead into another concept, which I'm gonna share with you in a moment because I want to do another giveaway. I would like to have another giveaway right now. Um, this time it actually is my white mug with the red lipstick on. So again, that it's a, it represents, you know, put that on. You've got this, you can do this. Lean into it. Don't be afraid of it. Grab it and run with it. All right. Who needs some red lipstick? <laughs> Heather Trimis does. Who? Heather. Heather Trimis. Trimis? Trimis, Trimis. Okay. We need to lighten up. Yeah. <laughs> my birthday. It's my birthday. <laughs> I'm glad you're all here with me today. <laughs> That's the other thing. It's not on my list, but it's in the book. Celebrate your birthdays. Do you know how many people don't celebrate? And that was something, fortunately, we did all my life in my family. Every birthday is a big deal, and it should be a big deal because that means you're here. <laughs> so you're special. All right. The next tip I want to share. So we just talked about um, the overwhelm, right? And and we're so busy and all of that. So the next tip actually I wanna share, I'm gonna switch it out a minute. Here's an important question for you. Are you living a busy life instead of a big life? So what I've observed and even in my own life, everybody's gotten back to busy everybody is so busy i think it's even worse worse than when before covid like we had busy lives before covid right but my perspective or my view or my thought is as i hear everybody they're going on all these vacations and they're doing all these things and they're cramming in every little thing they possibly can i believe i'm thinking it's because we feel we were shortchanged. We lost a couple years of our life where we didn't do things. And so now let's shove it all in. And, and I know I want to do things and catch up on things. Also, though, we have to know when we need to pause. Because if we take too much on, then that leads into our wellness pillar. Or we become cranky with others. I become cranky. I was cranky the other day when I came into the office because I was gone for six days, but it was very chaotic and I never got a break. And I was putting in long hours uh, with the work and staying up really late and then trying to travel, which isn't fun anymore. And, you know, just ask Brian and Malia. I came in the, that first morning. I was a cranky person. And I told them, I said, I'm cranky right now. I need, I need to get grounded with myself. So think about your life. What's on your calendar? Are you actually spending time on the things that give you joy? Are you spending time with the people who are important to you? Or do you just, you know, you meet up with friends and all they do is complain and moan and have horrible discussions. In fact, I'll tell you something really quick. It happened, I, I think, several, it was several, several months ago. And I go to the same beauty shop all the time for my nails. And they got the pedicure area. And they're there talking, right? And I'm there to relax. 
and just, like I said, decompress. And a lot of times the, the nail techs are just talking stuff about things that just, you know, I could care less about. It's just not real conversation or very negative sometimes. And so the one day I was sitting in the pedicure chair trying to relax and there was another woman next to me and then two techs and they just got into these conversations about all this negative and nasty stuff and did you see this and did you see that and did you read about this and it was so depressing and finally i looked at all of them and i said will you stop that conversation please i said you guys are so negative i'm here to relax can't you talk about anything positive and I just laid into them because it was so, it's like, is that all you can focus on? There are good things in life. So who are you hanging around with? In big life, we talk about your inner circle. Who is your inner circle? And if all they do is complain, they are not your friends. Get away from them. I have chosen I have chosen who will be in my life and who will not be in my life. Now work, I know you don't always have a choice, but you don't have to listen to the negativity. That's a choice you and I make. And if someone spirals into that conversation, you've got to pull them out of it. Again, when we look at the busy life versus the big life, Remember, we talked about it's the quality of what you're doing, not necessarily the quantity of what you're doing. So I would love to encourage you, or I am going to encourage you, that this weekend, look at your calendar the next few months out. What is on your calendar? Are they things you really want to do? Are they things that the people that you're going to be with, do you really want to be with them? You know, so... Be very, um, be very protective of your time and who you spend it with because life is very short and you want to really have that quality of what you want to do, right? So let's go on. We've got a few more um, and I can't, I'm not watching any of the, I can't see any of the chats right now, but we'll have questions too. Here's one of my favorite ones. This principle, and it's a chapter in the book called Superwoman is Missing in Action. And that is okay. I had to learn this because I was always superwoman. You know, I graduated from high school. Uh, I got married at 19. We had a house and then in, and all these other things and then i had kids at a younger age and i worked 40 you know probably even 50 hours sometimes a week i you know we had to iron clothes then you know <laughs> we didn't everything had to be ironed and all of it but anyway we tend to have that trait especially administrative professionals right you want to be the superwoman you want to take care of everybody and if you have a family, maybe you're taking care of elderly parents. Maybe you're helping people through your church, uh, your neighbors, right? And so what happens, we don't have any energy left for ourselves. And when we're tapped out, we cannot be or do all the things we want for the people we love. So as administrative professionals, you know, you're taking care of your executives, managers, leaders, maybe an entire department. And then you look at your personal life, correct? So we, we have to realize that it's okay if superwoman is missing in action. In fact, it's healthy. Teach your kids how to wash their own clothes. You know, that's the weirdest thing. Why, as mothers, you feel like your kids are 14, 15, or they come home from college and you're still washing their clothes. Let them wash their own clothes. <laughs> and it's not mean. It's you have to protect yourself. You have to care enough about yourself so mentally and physically you can be there 
for the people you love and you care about. It is not a selfish thing. Self-care is not selfish. It's bad when you don't have self-care because you cannot give it all to everybody. And that's important to recognize. And then the last one really quick, but it's important. Be all you were meant to be. There is a plan for your life. There is a plan and you are given particular gifts that maybe no one else has. And so you, you will not live all you were meant to be if you live in fear. If you're afraid to step out, if you're afraid to take a risk, you do not know what you're capable of until you try it. And I see this, I've seen this for 34 years in training administrative professionals. When they come into a class virtually or in person and I force them to do certain things through learning activities that I know they don't want to do, but they don't have a choice because I know when they get to the other side, they're going to look back and say, wow, I did that. I didn't think I was capable. I didn't think that I could write a three minute presentation and talk in front of others. So you've got to really explore and get to know yourself and not be afraid. Like I wouldn't be where I am today with all this dynamics if I didn't step out. I stepped out of time in 1990 when there was no administrative training. I ventured out and we had little kids and I didn't know what was going to happen. And I was used to a full-time job with a regular paycheck, but I stepped out. And over the 34 years, there's six times where we were in danger. But I want to encourage you, you know, those are all what we call character building moments. You know, as you step out, you're going to grow and you're going to build confidence. Who you are today is not all you are capable of becoming who you are today. And that doesn't mean you're not great. I just know you have more in you. So reach for that big life. All right, a couple things. I know we have some um, journals and questions and all of that. I have a couple other tips really quick. So in the back of the book, I have a little piece in here that I call Jonisms. So these were big thoughts for a big life. So I want to share just a few. And then I've got uh, six other tips, five other tips. Small thinking leads to a small life. Your life is only going to be into proportion what you think. So if you think small, you're going to be small. You're going to live a small life. Think big and don't be afraid. And don't let others' fears and doubts hold you back. You cannot see it but you step out anyways. That's where I talk about you have to have faith. You can't actually see it, but that's okay. Step out and the answers will come as you step out. It takes courage to let your inner light shine and not follow the crowd. And then I love this one, pull back from the abyss and focus. Pull back when you have a lot going on, pull back. Have your quiet time, focus. All right, a few other quick tips. Um, well, I already said about make make sure you become all you were created. We talked about make time for you. Here's one we didn't talk about. Affirm that you are a victor, not a victim of circumstances. Now, you might at first feel like the victim when something traumatic or bad happens. You maybe lose a job or an illness. Yes, you're going to feel like the victim at first. But then don't let that last. You've got to see yourself as the victor over your circumstances to be able to actually be the victor. Um, and then part of that to me is also see the light in the darkest night. Lights or the stars shine brightest when the sky is the darkest. 
So when it seems the darkest time to you in life, that's your time to really pull everything that you can and continue to shine through that. So, all right, a couple things. Um, I know time's going really fast. Uh, what I'd like to do is do the dream big journal. We were just talking about that. So, Malia, who? Dream big journal goes to Laura. Mm -mm. Mid. <laughs> Mo Mo okay, Mo spell it. <laughs> M L. C H A L I K. <laughs> Sorry, Michelle <laughs> or Laura. <laughs> Laura <laughs> is the first name. Laura. <laughs> All right. Well, if you we're still good on time, so I hope you can stay. What we're gonna? I'll tell you what we're gonna do next. Um, this very special gift is going to be given away at the very end. Uh, I want to show everybody what it is a minute, first of all. All right. Because this also ties into an announcement that I'm, I'm excited to make. Um, so two other times, two times, I have hosted uh, a course called um, Big Life Mastermind Group. And so we created this for when people sign up for that course and they, this is what they get in the beginning before they go on their journey with me. And so it's filled with the book and then a piece of wood artwork and the, the, the uh, journal. So anyways, this is what we're gonna give away in a little while. So my announcement is really quick is that I've decided to do another host, another Big Life Mastermind course in 2025. So we'll be letting everybody know about that. And then before we go to questions, um, another gift for today is if you want to purchase the Big Life book, we have a 20% discount on that through next week, I believe the 23rd. We have limited inventory of the book. So if you want it, be sure to uh, order the book. And as I said, we will match whatever funds we receive for the books office dynamics will match and donate to the pancreatic cancer network. And the discount code is big life 20. All right. Questions. Let's take a few questions, please. Hi. Okay. Hi. So Kim would like to know, what do you recommend for one whose personality is not as an influence, influencer yet desires to be an influencer wow you just have to come to conference <laughs> uh, because that's all what we're going to talk about um there are you can learn it's is first of all it is something you can learn just like we teach so many other skills communication skills we teach persuasion skills there is a, a whole segment on influence. So this is something, again, that I taught earlier this week. Uh, I don't have my book right near me, my handout book, but there is a difference between being influential and being persuasive. There's a definite difference. And I can't answer it all right now because there are several steps to being influential. What you're going to have to do is just, I mean, really research that topic and you will get the steps on how to do that. Um, I think, because I always like to give people tips, maybe, maybe, probably I'll take some of the notes that I shared the other day in my class and we can write a blog. We could post a blog with the tips on how do you start to step out? How do you start to learn? Um, so we can do that because it is not easy. Even for people who have confidence, it doesn't mean they know how to be influential. So I'll make a note. That will be a great blog for us to maybe post over the next week. Okay. And a real quick answer to a short question here. Mm -hmm. um, we do not have Big Life on Kindle. 
No, no. I'm trying to think they had an audio book, but I I forgot what the audio version was. I need some water, everyone. I've been talking a lot this week. We do have an audio version? We used to have it. I don't. It's been so long, I forgot who sells our audio. Oh, (laughs) and I didn't even know. Yes, years ago, we made the audio version. So I'm, yeah, sorry about that. Okay. Um, Patricia's asking, she says she was in a six-year court battle, details not relevant, but I was told never to wear red in a courtroom because it represents power and confidence. Do you know if this is true and that, and that red can have a negative impact Mm -hmm. in certain circumstances? I've always wondered, but I never asked. Well, if you read about red, there are a few words, if you read truly what red represents, There are a few words that um, can be negative, okay? But 90% of the words are positive, that red is a positive color. Red, yes, definitely could intimidate others. So I imagine not knowing your court case, if you're pleading of uh, trying to get child support and all of that, yeah, maybe you're not gonna put on your red lipstick. But if I want to go into a situation and be powerful, if I'm going into a bank to ask for money, you know, now I read, I wear red all the time. It's just easy. It's my staple. I don't worry about it. But in general, um, and that's a, that's an entirely different conversation because knowing when you need to uh, have that power presence and that is projected through your clothes, through the colors you wear, Colors say a lot about a person. If you want to be taken seriously, if you're going in to ask for a raise and you need a power outfit, power colors, you know, it depends. If you want to be very friendly and opening and warmth, I mean, that's an entirely different study. And those are the things we teach too in our, our different courses. But yes, to answer your question, it depends on how you are trying to be perceived during that six year time. But if you wanted to come across as I've got this, I'm confident, don't mess with me. I don't care for in a courtroom, you would wear your red. Very nice. That's a good question. Thank it you. is, thank you. Um, and just a shout out to Dawn. She said that your audio book is on Audible. Audible, oh, that's thank it, you. thank you. Thank you very much, Dawn, for sharing that with us. <laughs> It's been so long, I forgot about it. But really quick, I am super excited. Uh, I can't tell you everything of what we're going to do next year for our 35th year anniversary, but I am super excited because I'm bringing big life back to life. There, it was such a passion project of mine, and we developed so many things with that, you know, years ago. And then I held a few of the mastermind. So I'm bringing everything back that we did. And we're, like I said, we're going to have a lot on, on that and the red lipstick on. And um, yeah, so I hope you'll look for that information and be a part of that. Because I really feel really quickly, I don't, we need help right now. We need help as a society, everyone is struggling. I hear it all around me. Remember, I talk to hundreds of people, whether it's through virtual or it's important. I read the quick headlines, which I hate reading because it's sad. I hear what's going on. There's this whole movement, as I told you, through the Human Resource Association on civility. I just shared with Malia the other day in USA Today headline yesterday that a very disgruntled passenger who was on traveling on frontier. She got so mad at the people behind the counter. She walked behind the counter and picked up their keyboard and started hitting them with it and picking up their computers. People are even in the class the other day, yesterday in our star course, we were talking about attitude and getting a temperature check where we are today. And several of our attendees said they feel very restless right now. Our, our world's in upheaval. So to me, this, it's time to bring this back because we need this more than ever in our world and, and moving forward. We all need these coping skills 
And um, yeah, so it's time. It's just time. And that's also why I'm happy I got to talk to this or talk about this today. Like what's really important. You've got to pick and choose your battles. That was somebody told me once a long time ago when I was had teenagers. They were like, don't fight with your kids about everything. Pick and choose what's most important. All right, another question. Yeah, another question. Um, Mernali Mer says, I tend to not say anything other than not commenting when someone is speaking negatively because I think it would be rude to walk away. What can we say to let other people know that the type of conversation is not welcomed? Well, um, a couple things, because I, I've had to even do this more in the last few years, even in a personal realm, and where um, even this gentleman was a neighbor and a great older man who I knew you know, well, he even used to help with my dogs, and he, it was just during that COVID and when we were electioneering, he would come and get into all this negative stuff and all this theory and whatever. And so I, I was sick of it. I didn't want to talk with him anymore. But instead I said, John, if you want me to talk with you, I am not having that conversation. I am not going there. If you want to talk, let's talk about some positive things you know, so sometimes a couple things. One is you can just interject and switch the conversation. You know, that's where good, excellent communication skills come in. When you realize the conversation is going in the wrong direction, you know how to like change that up. And so you can do it in that fashion. And then, or again, if that doesn't change, to be able to say, and that's where we have to set boundaries with people, is I, I don't want to, uh, I choose not to participate in this conversation. Why don't we, you know, change the way we're, change the path, you know, and then bring up something else. And if you want to walk away, walk away, don't feel bad about it. You know, I'm sorry, I, I choose to not participate in this conversation and you could say it with a big smile on your face thank you <laughs> that's right uh let's see we we've got three minutes so i just want to make a couple announcements and then i'll take another question and we have the giveaway so um really quick just as far as what's on the horizon so our conference our annual conference um as i told you so we just are found, we're announcing uh, Monday that our in-person conference is sold out. So we are thrilled it's two months early. I mean, that's amazing. Unfortunately though, that means some people who wanted to come in person aren't gonna be able to. However, you don't have to miss out. I mean, this is an amazing theme this year, the influential assistant. We have tremendous speakers. So we do still have live stream available and we'll have conference on demand. Um, so anyways, that's conference coming up. Our digital efficiency for administrative excellence class is what Mike Song, woohoo, start in September. So if you're interested in that next series, be sure you sign up soon. Our world-class assistant certification starts October. And we've already got several seats sold and we do keep that to a minimum of 25 people. So if you are interested, all right, let's do the big gift. And then I'll be happy to stay on a couple of minutes and answer some other questions. But who's our grand winner of the big life success kit? That is going to go to Casey Zayas. Congratulations. Congratulations. <laughs> All right. Well, let me, I can take another question for those of you who have to head out. Um, so in all seriousness, you know, um, we've had a, a great time and I love you all being here. And like I said, I'm really grateful that I get to celebrate another birthday and just to know that I'm really grateful for all of you 
you're my buddies. <laughs> I, I love this profession. I loved it since I got out of high school. Here I am 54 years later, still fighting for you. You know, it's an exciting time and we just all need to come together and we need to support each other and we need to be there for each other. And it's tough out there, you know, for all of you. I know you're doing your very best and you're working very hard, but we're here for you. We're, we're your family, we're your extended, we fit that family pillar. So, um, you know, anyway, I just wanna thank all of you so much because you're a huge part of my big life. You really are. All right, one more question and then we'll let everyone go. Any, one more question? Um, there's a lot of questions and um, I want you all to know, I'm going to try to get with Joan and maybe answer some of these and get back to you guys via email because um, there's there's some good questions in here and um, or maybe well, we do another take, webinar. <laughs> I could take five more. I'll take five more minutes, whoever wants to stay on. Um, so Rhoda, um, speaking of seriousness and, you know, needing, I don't know, this is, yeah. this is a good one. I don't know how to get peace of mind most of the time. I'm the admin at work, I'm always needed by someone. I'm a leader in my Eastern Star group, needed by everyone. And at home, my family acts as if they can't do anything on their own. I get away sometimes for vacation with a couple of friends, but they always make me feel like I'm wrong for that. Is there a way to deal with all of this? Well, yes, there is. Um, is first get over the guilt. I mean, number one, mm -hmm. you know, you are not wrong, first of all, in your thinking. It's healthy, you know, thinking about the getting away and making the time and so forth. It's important um, because of what is going on in your life. So first, yeah, get rid of that guilt. Um, you are still an individual. You were brought into this world and you have a right to live your life and not let everybody else drain you and suck it out of you. So, and then I would highly recommend you study communication skills. Yes. It's huge. We teach so many facets of communication. And, and so when you learn what to say, how to say it, when you learn the body language and all of that, it gives you the confidence then of how to say it and and then also how you respond when someone makes a comment back and i so i encourage you and we have a lot of, of blogs on that we have classes on that and so forth you really have to develop the communication skills and then you've got to develop toughness like this invisible bubble around you that says you're not going to break through to this bubble. Like when you're at work, you know, and you've got all this stuff going on, trying to not let that get to you. And it's hard, right? Because you're in it all day long. And then do you need to set any boundaries at work? I mean, if you're truly being overworked and you don't have the bandwidth, then you need to put together a presentation. And this is what we do. This is what we tell people. And I did it when I was an assistant listing the the quantity of the work you do not just that you oh set up meetings and travel plans but oh no i schedule an average of 40 meetings a month that are rescheduled three times i set up travel you know and then you have to actually present that and do your due diligence um and then present that and then help them to see maybe that it's it is too much for you to handle so those are a few quick ideas. Like I said, if you go on our website, our blogs, I know I've talked about these things so many times. Are we have micro webinars? Uh, join our assistant um, exchange awesome. mm -hmm. Facebook group because there's over 5,000 EAs on there who post and help each other on a regular basis. That's so a great group. Ideas. Yes. Awesome, Joan. Thank you so much. Um, Karen would like to know what your connection is. Sorry, you, Malia. Oh. Sorry, no, something happened with my volume. You know, in the, okay, go ahead. Is it, can you hear me? Yes. Okay. Um, no, I said, thank you. That was, that was wonderful. 
Um, okay. Uh, let's see. Gina would like to know, how do you deal with coworkers who are jealous and become mean girls when you try to live big? You just walk around with your big old smile. <laughs> <laughs> it's, I mean, I'm serious. You just do your thing. And I remember I worked in the workplace for 20 years on a lot of different companies and girl, yes, unfortunately women can be me. Um, and so how I actually look at that, instead of getting upset with it, I actually feel sorry, seriously, for those individuals. When someone can't be happy for you, there's, there's something wrong. There's things wrong in their lives. And that's where that comes from. They don't maybe have that inner security and it is jealousy, but don't let that stop you because that's their problem. That's something they've got to get over and they've got to deal with. So instead keep, keep doing the right thing because this way you may actually inspire some people to also live their big life it's amazing when you are confident and you're doing the right thing you're going to touch someone you you may not even know who you touch but you will and so become that shining light become that mentor also remember that a lot of other maybe younger assistants are watching you and watching how you handle those types of situations so people are watching you but continue and just don't get into that conversation. Like I said, continue to do the right thing and then find the people who are your inner circle within the workplace. And that might be one or two people. It doesn't need to be a lot. You just need a few good people yeah. in your life at work. We have a couple of comments on what you're talking about. Rhonda says, kill them with kindness. And Tracy said, yes, I was told by a friend to be foofy and kill them with kindness as they will come around and recognize how we are. Mm -hmm. That's sweet. Uh, okay, so more questions or we're a little over. What would you like to do, Joan? Oh, one, one more. <laughs> I'm like, no, I'm reading Maureen. <laughs> oh, Grady, what she wrote. Red can be perceived as an aggressive color Many years ago, I stopped wearing red for a few years because I realized every time I wore red, I had a headache. I don't know what that's about. I don't know because I never get headaches, but sounds silly, but true. I started wearing red again about five years ago. Good. You go, girl. <laughs> Rock your red. And speaking of your wet red, the quick question, and there were a few people, they want yeah. to know, they want to know the shade and brand of your lipstick. <laughs> I know everybody asks. It's actually a lip stain by Lip Sense, L I P S E N S E E. You've got to look for a local distributor because you can only get it through them. And the color is blue red. And actually, when we did Big Life, we had our own red lipstick too that we used to, to yeah. sell. We may need to come out with that next year, bring it back. I find that. But it's L I P S E N S E. Yeah. All right. Um, go ahead. We'll take it to two more. It's 11 okay. and 8, but go ahead. Um, Nicole wants to start a local administrative professionals group in her area, but she's having a difficult time with getting people interested in particip participating. Um, Leslie piggybacked off that and said she started an admin group, but she's struggling to hook admins in reviving the pre-COVID interest. How do we get people interested? Oh, that's a, a, I mean, that's really a good question. Um, one, it's great that you want to do that because it, it really is very beneficial when you can meet and be together. I will say, yes, it's definitely probably very hard today in a world that is used to, you know, the remote and the virtual world. Um, and even the, the big um, organization, IAAP, I used to belong to that for many, many years. And they always, we had our local chapters, you know, you met on a regular basis, you were in the same room, you heard great speakers. 
And then several years ago, uh, they were changed that process. And a lot of people wanted just these virtual meetings, but they don't work the same. So what do you do? You really have to first get your thoughts together and where you create your presentation um, on what are the benefits of that? What will it do by coming together? So you, you really have to sell and persuade people. And I started an association and when I was living in Virginia Beach way back in the early 90s, it was the Star Achievers Association. And so I went out and found people. But again, get be very thoughtful and, and really think of, you know, about why. Why should they come? Why should they take their time? And list as many benefits as you can. Have it very organized as to how, how will that run? What will it look like? Um, and then I don't know if you're going to reach out to particular assistants. Uh, in my day, what I did is I found out because this was, you had to work for a CEO or C-suite executive. So I looked at the big companies in our community and now you have LinkedIn so you can see who these individuals are and reach out, but make sure you have everything together um, and focusing on the benefits. Awesome. And there's more, but that I'll just stop there. So would, we'll take would, one, um, one more question. Would going on our um, the Facebook group that you're talking about, maybe like throwing out there where you're from mm -hmm. and what area you're in and maybe get some people. Oh, that's a great idea. Mm -hmm. That's yeah, I love that idea. Woohoo! Hey, Malia. <laughs> What's this? <laughs> Malia, go. Oh, I think I'm so happy it's Friday. <laughs> it's been so busy around here. <laughs> Okay. All um, right. Let's see. How do we funnel all of our ideas, energy, and motivation in a realistic way to the limitations in our role? I'm thinking that's a good question because I don't know if you ask my team, I don't probably hide too much of my enthusiasm. Um, I just do it. But <laughs> I, I'm not sure I'm clear on the question. Read it again. How do we funnel it in today's All world? of our ideas, energy, and motivation in a realistic way to the limitations on a role. The role. Okay, sorry. I didn't hear that. Uh, so when you have your ideas or, uh, you know, what you'd like to see happen is to um, list those. You now, whether you write them down or you use word, whatever, and putting those ideas down and really thinking about it, you know, those ideas and what's the purpose of them? How are they going to benefit your department or your organization or your leader? So yes, you do have to be realistic in that sense and within your role. And then think about, as you think about that and the realistic part of it, who would have to be involved? Do you have the bandwidth to do that? Um, how would it tie into your organization? Is it going to help them save money? Is it, you know, you have to be very specific, again, with some due diligence on that. So it's great. You should have good ideas and look for ways to streamline processes or come up with a completely new way of doing something. And then you're right. You have to be a little practical or realistic as to do you have the capacity to do that and what would it take? And then maybe you have to narrow your ideas down. You can't you have five ideas, you can't do all of them. Pick one to start. What's the one with the most impact? And choose that one. And then see the success of that before you go on to other ideas. Okay. And I'm losing my voice, aren't I? You are. You are. All right. I keep saying one more, but for real, just one more. Oh, and then... I bet you were gonna go. <laughs> I am gonna go. I know what you okay. need to do. Um, um go ahead. It's hard to think so. Okay. When starting a new position, what do you believe are your top five tips for success? And what was the first part? When starting a new position, what do uh, you believe you know, are your top five? First of all, number one, listen and observe. Just 
listen, listen to what people talk about, observe, don't go in and start making suggestions. You know, it kills me when somebody comes in new to a company and they've only been there a month and they want to change everything. It's like, you don't even know what's going on here. So we had somebody like that years ago. So anyways, <laughs> um, anyway, yes, observe, listen. I would also look for the people who are the star performers in the company, maybe those other assistants or EAs who tend to stand out, who maybe have a good reputation and you want to really reach out and get to know those individuals and see if they'll go to lunch with you. And um, that's how I know I learned and would ask them to give me some insight into the organization. Um, uh, let me think a minute um, for success is immediately soon into the first two weeks you've been there, make sure you get some one-on-one -on -one time with the person or the people you're going to support and find out what their expectations are of you and of the relationship. So you have to start dialoguing right away with the people you're going to be supporting. I think also, um, oh my, there's so many good ideas when you're first starting out. Take notes on everything. Do not assume you're going to remember everything. And then be curious, you know, ask questions, be in that kind of mode of curiosity. And, and in terms of tell me more. If somebody tells you something now, that's interesting, can you tell me more about that? So you want to get more context around things. So those are a few ideas. I think these are all good questions we can write yeah. blogs about or, or we're doing a lot of content now. We have our monthly um, administrative assets. I believe that goes out monthly. So those are things we can address as well. Mm -hmm. So again, in, in closing really quick, remember with the book, okay, the code is Big Life 20. Um, we have a limited quantity and please look for what we're going to do next year. We have a lot of great plans, cool. things to, you know, bring you into all of that. And what else? Malia, anything um, else? We're forgetting, I'm forgetting. No, you covered everything and also 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 i something very important malia is a big part of my big life she'll be with me eight years this month and you know i couldn't do a lot of the things that i do if she wasn't here you know keeping an eye on everything and helping run the show and you know when i am cranky or down or whatever, you know, Malia is very in tune to that. And she knows how to come in and calm me down. Or what do you bring me tea or something? And you'll say, now just stop and breathe, Joan. Mm -hmm. You know, so I do want to really thank Malia for thank you. It's been a fun journey the past eight years. And we have so many more, more to come. Many more, more to come. come. We are, we're going to live our big life, all of us at yeah. Offer Dynamics. We're going to live big. And we want to you to share life with us and be on this journey with us. So thank you. Um, can I can I stop for one second? Because yeah. a, a, a last minute question popped in. They want to know about the awards, including the Mickey Mouse. <laughs> this one, this, my mouse car. They want to know about all of them, including Mickey Mouse. So well, this, this probably is one of the most wonderful, most, oh, I'm going to get emotional about it. <laughs> so I was really blessed to um, the highlight of my career was being asked to by the people at Walt Disney World to come in and teach their assistance in 2018 and I had been in the career training for many many years I've had amazing clients Procter and Gamble and all kinds of big clients but the reason why it was so special with Walt Disney, because Walt Disney World, their, their university, they are recognized in the training industry as the gold standard. No one does training better than Walt Disney World. So the fact that they called me and chose me to lead their EAs in the Star Achievement Series over six months 
was an honor, just the biggest honor I've ever had. And they were like a second family to me. I was there every month and I bonded with everyone there and they, they just treated me so very special. And so when we were done, they presented me with this, which they rarely give out to people. And so this is their version of the Oscar award and mm -hmm. this is mine. So this is very near and dear to my heart and I'll never forget my memories there with all of them. Um, this award is also <laughs> truly special. I received this two years ago from the Admin Awards uh, group and Sunny Noonan and her team, I'm very grateful to them. It's the Jeanette Castellano Lifetime Achievement Award. Only two had been given out up to when I received it. And that was her Sonny's mom. And she was a lifetime uh, career assistant until I think up till 80 or something like that. And so I was presented with this award. So this is also very special um, recognition for my contributions to the training industry and pioneering that. This award is actually something you could get. <laughs> This, this is actually the Joan Burge um, Innovation, Award. Innovation Award, sorry. And this is for this year. We will be uh, announcing a winner at our conference in Las Vegas. Mm -hmm. And assistants, you know, are always innovating and creating special things. So this is an award an individual can win um, and uh, so they attend the conference, it's in person, um, being an in-person attendee, and then they submit to us why they believe they deserve that award. So we will be presenting that. And it's something you could possibly get next year if you come. <laughs> Are we good? We're good. We're All so right. good. All right. Thank you everyone so much. Thank you. Take care of yourselves. Have a great weekend. Bye. Bye.